So later on, okay, um, I uh, there was now the final exam, and that final exam was so important for me to pass this class. I needed at least a B, a B, not less than a B. A C would have been a little bit not really good. It was a B or an A period. And that was the last chapters that were more difficult than the previous ones. So the final exam, I had to run. I went to see my friend. I called her that, hey, we need to meet at the tutoring. She said, I cannot be available. I have to prepare my chemistry class because I have my exam too, my test exam, my final exam. I said, please, I say I'm stuck. Because yeah, she was stuck that day. I don't know what happened, but she was stuck. She couldn't come to help me that day. So that day, I was stuck. And I was waiting. I went to the tutoring. And many students were not good. There were not many students in the tutoring uh, lab for mathematics. So I was now left. That day was my day. That day was my day. I'm telling you guys, I was crying. I look around and say, who's going to help me? I went to the tutoring lab. I took the mathematic uh, books. Okay. I took the mathematic book for that chapter. And I started reading. I tried to do my, my exercise to practice. Impossible. It wasn't going through my, 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 my brain couldn't. It couldn't. It just couldn't work. And at some point, I was so desperate. My friend couldn't be there. And I had two days left before the test exam. And I was crying. You know, in America, you're on your own. Who cares? People can still cry and they don't care. I was sitting on the floor of the hall, you know, of the school. The hall that was taking you to... Um, the tutoring lab. Guys, it was like I say, I cannot miss or fail that class because first of all, being an international student was very expensive for me and the pressure and all this, I couldn't miss that class because the nursing program, there was a time to enter the nursing program. So if you were missing a class, you were, you were kind of um, slowing your entrance to the nursing program as well. I was sitting on the ground. I was like crying. I said, oh, then I saw my father's in my head. No, like, I told you. I told you. Take mathematics seriously. I was standing. I took my backpack. I said, you know what? I fell already. There was only two days left, but in my head, I was already down. I I start walking, and for some reason, you know, not far from the lab, you have like a board where they put um, announcement, advertisement, but also some quotes of famous people or people who did great things. And I don't know for some reason that day I happened to fall to stop at the board on front of the board because I was so desperate I didn't know what to do anymore. And for the first time of my life going at that school, I started reading the quotes just because I want to. I was just like, what am I going to do? I can accept to fail. I still have two days before the exam. And my eyes fell into two quotes. The first one was from Albert Einstein and the second one was from Benjamin Franklin. I always remember that. But I cannot say the word, word to word. I can try to just um, paraphrase what I say. The first quote was from Albert Einstein and what he said, it was like, in order for me, I mean, he was saying like, People have always seen me like a genius. People always call me a genius because when they see what I do, they are impressed. But few people, but these people don't know the amount of time, amount of days, the number of days, and even months 
has planned to find the solution of a problem, you know, in science. Something like that explained. So I was like, you know, that quote really struck me. I was like, so Albert Einstein, who is one of the quellers in science, says that when he's in front of a mathematical or a scientific a certain situation, difficulty, it takes time to solve it. It takes days, it takes months sometimes. But who am I? You know? And then I saw something that Benjamin Franklin said in his quote, which was kind of similar. And what he was saying is like, keep practicing. At the end, that was something that I understood from their quotes. It's like, it's not going to happen anyhow. We are genius to them because we come from the result, but nobody knows the amount of time, the days, the month we spend searching for the result that people will see that, you know, are impressed by. We spend many times in the background of the situation. When I saw it, I say, I can do it, you know. Like what gave me a certain strength, you know. Then I went back, so I, in my mind I was like, I should go back, why, should, why am I going to leave? There is a lot to learn here. So I went back to my classroom, to the tutoring lab on my own, like the other student was sitting around. I took my backpack, I went back to take the mathematics books, because I, in my head I said, I know this. I know the formula, I know what it is about. I just need to practice more and to take time. The thing is, I realized as I was sitting and I tried to talk to mathematics, you know, I tried to talk to my exercise. And the first thing that happened to me, confronting the mathematics that I was in front of, you know, the exercise I was in front of, confronted to. I talked to it. And I say, what is wrong? Why, why do you hate me? And the mathematics told me, I don't hate you. You are the one hating me. I say, no, you are the problem. And the mathematics say, no, it's you the problem. From your own age. Everything happened when you were young. And then he reminded me something. When I was a child, when I was a child, really like five years old, I think, my dad brought a note, a notepad, a blank, like, you know, with white paper, completely white paper. And on the cover of this notepad was uh, a drawing of Leonardo da Vinci. And Leonardo da Vinci, I didn't know I was just a child. And my, one of my brothers said, oh, you have Leonardo da Vinci. He was a great artist. And he stuck in my head that he was an artist. And for me, I thought that my father wanted me to be an artist. And then a few weeks later on, I was, you know, for some reason, I was drawing. And I was good in drawing later on in high school. In school, I was good in drawing. I was good in drawing. I'm telling you, when I was helping my, some of my friends, classmates, yeah, I was good in drawing. Then my father later on, you know, in my early age, like, we were doing that. And he told me, why are you drawing? I remember that day. And I said, Dad, you want me to draw? He told me, no. I want you to learn to do mathematics on this notepad. I want you to learn how to count. I want you to do the, the you know, the sign like that, to learn to square, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And I was like, no, I thought you want me to be an artist. No. I want you to learn mathematics, the basic, you know, to learn how to count, to do the subtraction, to do the addition, and you'll be drawing that on the notepad. But guess what? Remember, Leonardo da Vinci was an artist and a scientist. So I was confronted, I was confused. So for some reason, when my father was against me, what well, didn't want me to do art in the way because it was like, I don't need this drawing. And for a long time, my parents didn't want me to do drawing a lot. They were like, no, you do well with your art. You will suffer. We want you to do science. 
So it became a conflict with my father. So whenever I see mathematics on the blackboard, it will, I will remember the conflict, the disappointment I had in the conversation that I had with my father when I was young, like, no, I don't want you to be an artist. I want you to be, to do science. And that pained me so much. That really hurt me so much. You know, it's like when Sigmund Freud talked about the unconscious, you know, um, I forgot, I don't know the word in English. When Sigmund Freud took the example of the girl who saw the dog drinking in the water and she couldn't drink, you know, this unconscious, the, um, I don't have the word in English, sorry. It's unconsciously. And unconsciously, I was rejecting mathematics because I was angry that my father couldn't understand that. I thought, so for me, drawing at the time was like, my dad wants me to, but it wasn't that what he wanted. You know what I mean? So mathematics was sitting in front of me like that. And he reminded me that that was, that is the problem. You, and I, we have no problem. You have the problem since unconsciously you have been rejecting me because your father and you didn't understood, didn't agree with this. And me, I am in the middle of this situation. Now you need to make peace with yourself and make peace with what happened in the past. This disappointment that you have, that you want your dad to see you like that, you have to remove it. See it differently. So I took, you know, I was quite, you know, you know I'm Christian. I pray after that. I pray, I think God was talking to me through mathematics, obviously. If I was rejecting, in a way, something that was good, that my parents want me for my best. Even though... Yeah, they could have understood that I was a literature and artistic in a way because some, in some ways they really made me stop doing drawings, you know. It was my way of expression, especially when I went to a dormitory. It was my way of expression, you know. It was writing and drawing. So I have to forgive them. I have to forgive him, forgive myself as well, and understand that mathematics has nothing to do with it. So I started thinking about it, and I went back to the books. I opened the books again, and I started doing exercise in a much healthier way. And then that's, and then came back the word of the quote that I read outside on the board, on the wall. When you have a situation, it's no, it doesn't matter the number of hours, the time that you take. What matters is the result. And I have the problem also, the second problem I have with mathematics is because I felt that I should have come, I should come up with the result as soon as possible. I couldn't understand that. It was a process and it could take time and it was okay to take time to understand the, okay, the process. So for me, I felt that I shouldn't spend time searching to understand. If I was really in mathematics, if I was really a science person, it would be coming fast. When in fact, no, because the genius himself say, sometimes I took longer than that in some of situation I took some long time, a long time. So I'm not a genius, I'm not him, I don't have this IQ, obviously, but I can do the minimum, I can do the normal, you know. Then what happened? Again, I remember when I was studying with my dad, mathematics, he was always saying something, it is that the secret of mathematics is what? Is to practice over and over and over and over again. Remember your formula, but the best way for you to remember and to do that is to practice it. So don't forget that you need to practice again and again. When you leave your class, when you have understood it, don't just close the book. Practice it again. And that was the reason why I was also stuck 
and I understood that give me time. That's why you have a number of hours to do an exercise. So why am I rushing? It makes sense. So I took time now. And I said, you know what? Calm down. Let's do the exercise. Let's do the exercise. You know, I went back to the everything that we study. The chapter was supposed to come to the test exam, the final exam, sorry. I took all my other exams and I practiced and I practiced and I practiced again. When I went back on my left to lab, tutoring lab, mathematics lab, I went back to the dormitory at school there. Then I was practicing again. Then I was practicing. My friend told me, you can do it. Don't worry. You can do it. I practiced again and practiced again. And I remember my piano teacher once told me, when you are about to take an exam, remember, always play a classical music. We don't know what it is. But classical music has an effect, an effect, an impact for people who are preparing an exam or who are about to take an exam. You need to listen to music, you know, before going to your exam, something like that. Let's say, okay, I will take anything that I heard. Did I play some music before the exam that day? And I was calm. As people say, I was zen. And I was like, I'm ready to face the final exam. And that day, uh, it was the day I went, I sat down. I didn't stress. I remember what Benjamin Franklin and Anderson said in their quote, take your time. I took my time. I took my time. Africa, you are taught to stay and to and to think. So what happened? Uh, I wait until the last hour. I review if there were mistake. When the professor said it was the end, I gave my paper and I was confident. I was the first time that I had peace. I made peace with mathematics because later on, yeah, because I went later on to do business, I didn't go nursing anymore. So, yeah, you have to do math in a way, not have mathematics, but you still have, you still have some math, you know, business uh, calculus and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, it was a good experience. I've learned something, you know, sometimes the, the solution is in you. And sometimes what you hate, something that you don't like, is um, it's something that you need to see inside of you. It's a projection of something that is hiding in you.